Welcome back to Emirates 24-7. Well, look back at the UAE's history and you will see how this was a land of pearl divers. Pearls from the Gulf were famous around the world. However, with the discovery of oil and the rapid development in other sectors, the pearl trade took a back seat. Soon stories about pearling and pearl diving were left to the textbooks, with little actually happening on the ground. But the trade in pearls continued to grow, in fact at a rate of 25% each year in the last decade. Yet local manufacturing had somehow all but stopped. Well, until 2013 that is, the Dubai Pearl Exchange hosted the first tender of pearls cultivated in the UAE. Priyanka Dutt reports. <laughs> A silent pearl auction, selling quality pearls made in the UAE to the highest bidder. On the face of it, this looks like a regular auction. But in reality, history is being made. Despite a rich heritage of pearl diving, in the last few decades, indigenous pearls had all but disappeared from the country. People had other things to do. I mean, uh, the pearl divers moved to farming, moved to uh, other trades, and, you know, there was oversupply. Even though they were diving for natural pearls, there is a threshold. And when you talk about color stones and jewelry market, the easiest uh, side of the jewelry industry to be oversupplied to the market are pearls. Pearls and pearl diving are an inherent part of the UAE's history and culture, but somewhere along the way got left behind in the fast-paced development brought about by oil or tourism or real estate. But today, a company in Russell Khema is set to reclaim that history. We are at the first ever auction of pearls cultured entirely in the UAE. What you see in the collection today, various sizes, various lusters, different colors, all made in the UAE. That is something unheard of for hundreds of years. The story began almost a decade ago in the Emirate of Rasil Khema, when a family of traditional pearl divers decided to revive the lost craft. Only this time, the scale was much larger. Rack Pearls, in partnership with a Japanese company, set up a facility that would see the seeding of thousands of oysters. Our ancestors were uh, talking a lot about their stories of their passion and joy and uh, suffer and how they were spending four months and ten days in the middle of the sea chasing uh, or looking for uh, oysters. It was a very tough journey and uh, it's everywhere. It's surrounding, surrounding us with the, the literature, the poetry, uh, the name of the girls. Uh, it's all talking about poles and something related to poles. We were questioning all the time why it's not coming back again to, to the Gulf. Why there is no, no one talking about it. Uh, this is the question that was around and that what was making my brother go to Japan, exploring uh, the possibilities of bringing this uh, project back again. To, to the Gulf. It takes will. It takes will and patience, which I believe uh, I can't talk for others, but if you read through uh, history, nobody was willing to, you know, uh, uh, keep uh, focused on pearls. You only had uh, a handful of people that had that passion for pearls. The late Sultan Awais has a great collection in the National Bank of uh, uh, Dubai. A uh, few families in Abu Dhabi have some collection. But these are more museum, not trade. And that's where Rack Pearls was different. They took their passion for pearls to the next level, becoming the first and only company in the Middle East to produce their own pearls, competing globally with other established markets like China, Japan or Tahiti. We started with very limited quantity of uh, implanting the oysters, then we increased them year by year, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, up to now we are doing uh, 40,000 uh, pearls a year. Today, Rack Pearls hopes its initiatives pave the way and help create awareness to revive an industry that was once considered the cornerstone of trade in the UAE. Priyanka Dath for Emirates 24-7.